Hello, welcome back to my studio. On today's video, I'm gonna take this stained glass piece from just kind of the layout of all of the lines and start to actually block in the colors and talk about how I visualize what the finished painting's gonna look like. You know, the very first thing I'm gonna do today is block in the glow of the sun. So if you wanna see that, stick around. So in the last stained glass pieces that I did, I actually came in um, after the fact and put the glow of the sun in there. And then I had to kind of put in the influence of the sun all over everywhere else. And that, that really took a lot of extra time. Um, so for this piece, I'm actually going to put the sun in first. Uh, and that's for a couple reasons. One, it'll remind me to continually kind of put that influence of the sun on all of the trees and all of the other areas. Um, but another reason is sometimes it's very difficult to judge values, like the lights and darks, how light something is when the canvas itself is probably like a five or a six out of 10 on the value scale. So I find sometimes what helps is if I put that glow of the sun in first and that, that lightest light, then I can kind of, then I have the whole range of color from the lightest light of the sun to the black of these lines. And so it makes it just a little easier for me to gauge how light or dark the other colors are when I put them on the canvas. So the first thing I've done is squeezed out my colors and mix them. So I'll show you those. And again, I know if I hold this up, there we go, where you can actually see some of those lighter colors. So we've started with a lemon yellow, a cadmium yellow light, cadmium yellow deep, uh, sorry, cadmium yellow medium, cadmium yellow deep, cadmium orange, cadmium red, and alizarin crimson. And then I have my titanium white. And I also have a little bit of the uh, impasto medium up here. I've mixed that in with all of these colors because I want this to dry fairly quickly and I'm gonna put it on fairly thickly. I've also mixed in just a little bit of the lemon yellow and the cadmium yellow medium with the white here. Um, and so this area here, these are gonna be used for that sky area around the sun. And these colors are going to be used for these lines here um, that kind of represent almost like letting in the stained glass. Um, and so I need to kind of, first of all, lighten up all of the lines in this area where the sun's going to be. And then I'll put in um, the actual colors inside those shapes. So I'm just going to rearrange the camera a little bit so that you can see the canvas better. And then I'll get started on that. Okay, I've zoomed in a little bit on the, uh, just adjust the lights a little there. I've zoomed in on the uh, sun area. Now this is very confusing and it can be very confusing with all of these lines in terms of what is what. So just so you know, I'll show you again my photo, which is of Lake Batiste uh, in the winter uh, with the frozen lake and the sunrise. So I just have to remember that this line here represents the distant shore, the shape in there. This is the birch tree. Any of my tree shapes are kind of a double line for the solid trees and then single line for some of the smaller shapes. Um, and so I have to remember that because the lightest thing is gonna be the sky and then the distant shore and then the birch trees. So let me just get a little brush. Now this very first part is gonna be a little persnickety as I put in the sun, because what I'm gonna to have to do here is I'm gonna to have to erase these lines. These lines I think are still a little wet. Let's just double check. Yeah, they are. So if I try painting these light colors into them, that, that black um, is going to come through and I'm gonna be forever trying to build this up. So at least for this little area right here that is the sun, I think this is gonna be easier for me to actually erase these lines kind of one at a time and go in and actually paint them with the color that I want. Um, because right in the actual sun area, having that black show through is gonna take away from the effect. And, and the only way I can get around that is by doing this or by putting three or four or five coats of paint 
in there and I think this is going to be easier but we'll see this is the first time I've ever kind of done this and put the Sun in first so I'm a little bit in process mode here so again this line is defining the top edge of the distant shore and let's get in and erase this as well and I'm gonna do this just a little bit at a time because I don't want to change or lose these lines um, I'm really happy with the composition and the layout here uh, if I start taking too much of this off and repainting it I'm liable to uh, to forget where my lines were or kind of move them and I don't really want to do that so I can do this just a little bit at a time and you can see as I'm the Sun's gonna be right here as I move away from the Sun the lines are not quite as light and have a little bit more so they're a little bit darker and warmer and I think for this I can actually just go over it go over that darker line in the yellow yeah just a little bit of the black showing through but it's these areas right in here close to the tree that need to be really really light and this might not make any sense to you right now till you see where I'm going um, it's just a little too light This piece actually is probably going to take me quite a while. I was looking at all the shapes I've done. Sometimes I get carried away with the shapes. Um, but I, this piece, I think I've mentioned everything I'm doing now, is going to a solo show that I have upcoming in Toronto in about five or six weeks. And this is the first time that I've actually rented a gallery space and I'm actually doing everything um, for the show myself. So promoting the show, running the gallery. Oops got paint on that um, so for this show it's really important to me that it's only the absolute best uh, representation of my work I mean I try to do that all the time but sometimes you know you're under the crunch for a number of paintings that you have to get done and so you end up sometimes choosing subject matter where you know it's gonna make a great painting but it's not quite uh, maybe as complex or you kind of avoid doing certain things because you know it's going to take you a long time to, to finish that painting and you're under the gun to get pieces done um, but I've decided and because with the galleries I usually commit to having so many paintings for a show I decided with my show coming up I'm only going to do pieces that I think are going to be absolutely spectacular and if they take much longer than normal for a similar size piece, I'm okay with that because, again, because of this being my first, first time of uh, completely organizing a show and paying for everything, doing it all up front, I really, really want this to, uh, to be a success in terms of the overall impact of the show, more so than necessarily the... Uh, you know the number of paintings or the number of sales I really want this show to be amazing and so I'm okay and like typically a a 24 by 24 might take me a day or a day and a half um, I wouldn't be surprised if this piece takes me I don't know three four five days to finish so I mean on the one hand it's like yeah, I'm losing losing money to a certain degree in terms of how much time it takes me but again I've made that uh, determination that for this show I'm not going to worry about how long pieces take me I'm just going to go for the maximum impact and the other thing is we've um, we're about to launch the release of some open edition G-clays both frame paper prints and the canvas G-clays 
and I've decided that some of these stained glass pieces are going to be part of that. So that's the other thing sometimes when it's, it's worth spending a lot of extra time on a piece is if there's a thought that you might reproduce it, then it's certainly worth it even on a kind of uh, financial level to spend the extra time to get it as, you know, just absolutely as great as possible because if you're selling prints of it, that's going to make a huge difference. Um, and you can kind of uh, cost dollar cost average that time over, over the prints as opposed to if it's just one sale of the original. I mean, I know a lot of people don't like talking about money and earnings uh, when you talk about art. But the fact of the matter is, if you're going to be an artist, you're a small business owner and you're an entrepreneur and you need to make a living. Uh, even all of these videos that I'm doing, uh, there's a cost associated with this, not only in terms of the equipment, um, but of the time spent shooting them and of the time spent editing them. And at the end of the day, money is the fuel that drives all of this. If I don't make enough money to support myself, then there will be no more videos. So, um, and that's also part of my mission, that whole idea of helping other artists achieve success and doing what they want to do is to get that whole conversation away from the fact that somehow if you are concerned at all about money, you're not a real artist or an authentic artist. It's like, yeah, it's so ridiculous. Every single person on earth here has to be concerned with earning a living. It doesn't matter whether you're a police officer, whether you're uh, an accountant, a lawyer, a singer, or a visual artist. If you can't make a living, you can't pursue your craft. So I, for one, am quite happy to be known as a very good artist um, and also a very good businessman. And I think when you put those two attributes together, um, then you can really accomplish a lot. So I would just say never ever be afraid to really think about the economics of what you're doing. You don't want it to be the prime mover, but as I say, if you can't pay the bills, you can't pay the rent, you don't have a studio. You're not going to produce any work. Okay, so this glow is starting to come together. And again, that, I mean, it's always the same in terms of that creating the glow. It's this little area of the sun is the lightest area on the canvas. And as we move away from that, we go from kind of white to kind of lemon yellow to cadmium yellow light. Now these are all also lightened a bit with, uh, with the titanium white. But it, it just goes like the color spectrum from yellow to orange to red to violet to blue. And all of that kind of aspect can be fine-tuned um, down the road in the painting process. Now the other thing that I'm going to do here is these these lines that again that are kind of like if you think of it as if this is a stained glass window these are like the leaded glass these almost disappear as well right in front of the sun and as I've mentioned before even though you can see when I come over with a second coat how it really lightens it even though I'm painting you know white on those areas of the sky, the dark value of the canvas is darkening the impression of that white to a certain degree. And that's also the reason I have the impasto medium in here, um, is that, you know what I just realized in my camera? 
you probably can't see a lot of the detail um, that I'm talking about. So I'm going to I'm going to stop right now. I'm going to take a picture of this so that you can see it. Um, and then I'm going to come back a little later when I've got more of the sky and this resolved so that you can actually see what I'm talking about. OK, so now I've got this kind of glow area kind of roughed in my lightest lights. Um, and now I'm going to start working on the sky coming from out here in with the kind of more of the blues. Now I'll show you a, a close up photo of this because I realized um, that this doesn't show up that well on video because it's all very subtle differences in the lightest lights. Um, but you can see how I've got this kind of roughed in um, and I will actually work on this and kind of bring it to fuller finish at the end once this paint has dried. But I'm going to leave it for now and I'll come back when I've got more of the sky blocked in. So now I've started to block in my sky. Um, and again, this is uh, very, can be very confusing um, when you're thinking of what each of these shapes are. And I'm so far knock on wood. I haven't actually painted sky where it's supposed to be uh, trees or leaves or the distant hills. So I guess the first thing for me is I, I just need to kind of get clear in my mind what are trees, what are branches, what shapes are part of leaves, and where that horizon line is for the distant shore. And then anything else above there is going to be suggestive of sky. Um, and for that, I'm just painting li these light pastel colors. But what I need to do is I need to make a gradation from these kind of more cool, slightly darker colors towards the warm and lighter colors and just have that continue down here and from in here down to here. Um, and if I do that, that will, that will basically give the same sort of effect that I have in my, my traditional work with that gradation of the bright, intense light gradually getting darker and cooler as we move out. Um, and so for now, it's just more of painting these shapes. I'll again show you my palette. I'm not going to go into great detail in terms of what colors I've used, but you can see there I've got quite a mixture of these kind of very light pastel tones. Um, and so this type of painting for me is more about just grinding away. Sometimes the more traditional one, it's the big flourish with the, you know, very expressive uh, brushwork. Um, but this one, it's more kind of one shape at a time. Um, and it's a very different, different type of process. Um, and it's kind of in a way more relaxing, but in a way more painstaking. But I think this is probably a good time to call today's uh, episode. So. I hope you've enjoyed watching me kind of start on this. Um, if you have, give me a thumbs up. Uh, if you haven't already, please subscribe. I welcome your comments and questions. I'm Tim Packer, and I thank you for your time.